Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless colossians 2 8 beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world and not according to christ once upon a time the words yes we can reverberated through every democrat arena it was the rise of barack obama who presented himself as the savior this was the moment when we began to provide care for the sick. This was the moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to heal. This was the moment, this was the time when we came together to remake this great nation. From his biblical prose to the Greek columns, Democrats were fainting like they were witnessing the second coming. Looks like somebody might have fainted up here. If we got, uh, 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 some of the EMS, somebody. Don't worry about, folks do this all the time in my meetings. We got somebody who fainted, this is what happens, they'll be okay, just give them a little room. Everybody bend their knees one time. They just don't lock your knees. The media breathed life into it, Barack. The Messiah. Messianic rhetoric infuses Obama rallies. Can a Messiah win twice? They made Obama sound like he could walk on water and depicted him that way. Photographers put halos on him. To them, Obama was a god. He made so many promises. We thought that he was going to be, I, I shouldn't say this at Christmas time, but the next Messiah. Now, revering Obama as a Messiah was gleefully embraced. But Republicans praying at a Trump rally, now a dangerous religious cult. Suddenly, praying on the Bible was controversial. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Last week, the former president promoting a God Bless the USA Bible, which includes documents from America's founding. Trump partnering with Lee Greenwood, whose famous song, God Bless the USA, you hear playing at his rallies. This isn't out of the ordinary. During World War II, FDR sent signed Bibles to American soldiers. He even wrote a foreword to the New Testament. Jimmy Carter is selling a signed Lessons from the Bible book online. It's over 300 bucks. Oh, and then there's the Jimmy Carter signed Bibles that are available right now for purchase for 98 bucks. Trump's 59.99. Today, Democrats are acting like Trump committed an act of blasphemy. It is so insulting to me as one who grew up in the church and have been a preacher since I was a boy, for him to not only come with selling Bibles during Holy Week. I mean, this is the week that we, that believe in Christ, the real Christ. Donald Trump speaks and is the most divisive, cruel person in the history of the presidency. And obviously it's an exact opposite of what Jesus' message was in this. Donald Trump does this and then is backed by certain people of the faith. It just exposes the rot that exists in faith communities in America. Mm -hmm. When fascism comes to America, it will be waving a flag and holding a Bible. Yeah. That is what we are looking at right now. Yeah. Remember that in November. It's blasphemous. Okay. Are we really looking at Al Sharpton to tell us what God wants? And the media is acting like it's tacky for Trump to promote the word of God. Biden iced out his illegitimate grandchild is helping keep his crackhead tax cheating son out of prison while his dog bites the White House staff and trans activists flash us on July 4th. Let's not get into a battle over who's tackier. Is the media saying there should be less Bibles in America? It's probably the best thing Trump's ever sold. We were told Biden was going to try to win over Trump voters, but he's not. He's calling them ultra MAGA Bible thumpers. I mean, anything Trump does, Democrats have to do the opposite. This weekend, Trump wished America a happy Easter. Over at the White House, Biden wished us happy trans day of visibility. 
On Transgender Day of Visibility, we honor the extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans and reaffirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union, where all people are created equal and treated equally through their lives. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Democrats went full trans this Easter weekend. Today on Trans Day of Visibility, we celebrate the trans individuals in our communities and recognize their struggle, the struggle for recognition and increasingly survival. From all of us here at the Department of Education, happy Trans Day of Visibility. Each year on March 31st, we celebrate transgender Americans and all that they have accomplished. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature, rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. But here's how this whole thing gets started. 15 years ago, trans psychotherapist Rachel Crandall Crocker started Trans Visibility Day. Here she is. I'm Rachel Crandall Crocker. I am founder and organizer of the International Transgender Day of Visibility. Anyone can create their own day. Tomorrow is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwich Day. We're serious. It's also National Ferret Day. It's also National Do-It-Yourself Day. Barack Obama was president for the first eight transgender days of visibility. One of those days was Easter Sunday, and Obama didn't put out any proclamations about it. Those only started under Biden. And the geniuses at the Biden White House are either too stupid to realize what they're doing, or they're doing it on purpose. Biden was asked about, why'd you do it? And he said, quote, I didn't do it. So he's either a puppet or he's lying. A primetime doesn't care if trans Americans want to have a day to themselves. Have a day. Have a month. That's what Pride Month's for, right? June? But we discovered trans days take up half the year. They have Transgender Day of Visibility, Transgender Day of Remembrance, Transgender Awareness Week, Trans Awareness Month, Transparent Day, International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, Pride Month, LGBTQ History Month, LGBTQ Health Awareness Week, International Day of Pink, Day of Silence for Transbullying, Lesbian Visibility Week, Agender Pride Day, Harvey Milk Day, Pansexual and Panromantic Awareness Day, Stonewall Day, International LGBTQ Plus Day, International Non-Binary People Day, International Drag Day, Bisexual Awareness Week, Celebrate Bisexuality Day, International Lesbian Day, National Coming Out Day, Gender Fluid Visibility Week, International Pronoun Day, Spirit Day, Intersex Awareness Day, Intersex Day of Remembrance, I could go on. They dominate the calendar. We can't have one day for Easter. And if we raise the issue, we're pouncing. Trans Easter is now a thing. But Trump asking for prayer is tacky? I don't know about you, but I don't think the trans community is suffering from a lack of visibility. <laughs> it's all we see. They were selling trans nutcrackers in Target this Christmas. The country talks more about trans than the border. Now, it's a combination of a cry for attention and a cry for help. We're handing over bathrooms, the English language, and now half the calendar? If we've learned anything from history is that communism rooted religion out so people would worship the state instead of God. 
so be proud of your faith and don't let anybody demonize you never be ashamed by what you believe in your heart and happy Easter Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that he is the creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Joe Biden should be ashamed of himself. And all these people say, yeah, but this is the day we've always uh, uh, recognized, Transgender Visibility Day. Well, recognize it another day, not on Easter Sunday. It's an affront to the Bible. And quite frankly, it's an affront to biology. There are two genders. People can't just go in and out of one like a revolving door. And it's time that we stand up and say, you know, we, we need to help people who are confused. We need to feel for them. We need to get them some assistance. But we don't need to somehow completely surrender to this nonsense and pretend that it's normal. It's not normal. Verse 32 brings Romans chapter 1 to an end with a very bleak view of human nature. The point of the last half of the verse is to show that many people not only do things that they know deserve death, but also entice others to do them and approve when they do. In other words, the end point of depravity is not just the love affair with sin, but the desire to bring others with you to destruction. It's not just that people choose death for themselves in the passion of sin, but that they become suicidal at the spiritual level and assist others in eternal self-destruction by approving their sin. We are watching this play out right before our very eyes. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Harsh retaliation, punishment, revenge, 
That's what Iran is threatening against Israel after an attack on its consulate in Syria. The strike killed two Iranian generals responsible for aiding terror groups in their war against the Jewish state. The attack on the consulate building in the Syrian capital is considered an attack on sovereign Iranian territory. Israel has not claimed responsibility for the blast that killed General Mohammad Reza Zahidi, along with his deputy and five other Iranian officers. General Zahidi was a commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Quds Force and a key figure in Iran's proxy war against Israel that provides training and weapons for terror groups in the region. Zahedi and his deputy reportedly meeting with those leaders inside the consulate, likely planning further strikes on Israel. Iran is threatening a harsh retaliation, and Hezbollah said the enemy would receive punishment and revenge. CBN News war correspondent Chuck Holton says Iran doesn't want a one-on-one -on -one war with Israel. They want to continue with this proxy war through fighting Israel through the Houthis, through Hezbollah, and through Hamas. That includes sending weapons to terrorists inside biblical Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank. Israeli forces operating in the territories, discovering weapons shipped by Iran. Massive amounts of explosives. They're starting to find mines, landmines, hand grenades, rockets, uh, light anti-tank weapons, all sorts of uh, weapons like that. And that bodes very poorly for Israel. If a force the size of the one from Gaza that struck Israel on October 7th came out of Judea and Samaria instead, the destruction and death toll could be much worse. Because it basically surrounds Jerusalem on three sides. If 1,500 bad guys had come across into Jerusalem and started going crazy, they could have easily killed a lot more people. They could absolutely wreak havoc in Jerusalem, the capital city. Zechariah goes on to tell us that God will use the Israeli defense forces to destroy the Muslim nations that seek their destruction. In that day, I will make the governors of Judah like a fire pan in the woodpile and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left, but Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, Jerusalem. It represents a major escalation in Israel's fighting with its regional adversaries. Suspected Israeli warplanes on Monday destroyed the consular annex of the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Tehran said several military officers were killed and vowed revenge. The Zionist regime has put blind assassinations on its agenda in the struggle to save itself. But it should know that it will never achieve its sinister goals with such inhumane measures. This cowardly crime will not go unanswered. According to Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a top commander of its Quds Force, died in the strike, along with his deputy. The Quds Force supports Hamas and other allied militant groups like Hezbollah, Palestinian Islamic Jihad and the Yemeni Houthis. Israel has long targeted Iran's military installations in Syria and those of its proxies, but the attacks have intensified since October 7. Monday's strike was the fifth in a week to hit Syria, a close ally of Iran. It also comes after an escalation in cross-border fighting between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Last week, the Israeli defense minister signaled the country would be taking a more proactive approach in the region. We've turned from being the ones repelling Hezbollah to the ones who are chasing them. We reach all the places they're present. The attack on the Iranian consulate prompted demonstrations in Tehran. Protesters burned Israeli and American flags and called for Iran to respond to the attack. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. 
God controls the skies and the rain. God controls the wind. God has power over the clouds. God has power over lightning. God is in control of all things, including the weather. The major spring storm on the move right now. Tornadoes, hail, thunderstorms, and high winds threatening some 50 million people. Some scary moments like last night here in Missouri. A tornado warned superstar barreling across the western suburbs of uh, St. Louis. You can see some of the damage done to the roof of this house. It's uh, part of it torn off and, and debris into that tree. Flash flooding too. A lot of streets around St. Louis this morning are covered in water. And this was just one of several severe storm clusters pummeling this part of the country. Overnight, severe weather wreaking havoc for millions of Americans across the Midwest. A trail of destruction in Barnesdall, Oklahoma, after a possible tornado swept through the town. Homes there shredded, piles of debris filling the streets. This entire neighborhood seemingly without power, illuminated only by police cars. It's gone up. In another part of the state, video capturing a looming funnel cloud. At least four tornadoes reported overnight in Oklahoma and Missouri. The state also pelted by hail. One resident finding chunks the size of golf balls. Look at the size of these guys right here. Similar scenes down in Texas. I only brought a quarter for comparison, but look at that. Also in the tornado watch zone overnight, Illinois. Lashed by fierce winds. Now that same storm gathering strength and heading east. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds, he scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. We're going to turn now to the latest on a mass shooting outside an Indianapolis mall that left seven minors injured. Alex Perez joins us with the details and more violence across the country over the holiday weekend. A busy weekend for investigators here in Chicago and several other cities after a flurry of violence and shootings. This morning, a weekend of violence hitting parts of the nation as authorities search for the suspects behind that Saturday night shooting at an Indianapolis mall. I need four medics right now. A total of seven minors, ages 12 to 17, suffering gunshot wounds, with one still remaining in critical condition. I have a juvenile male shot twice, most arm with leg, tourniquet being applied. No arrests have been made, and authorities have yet to release any information about a possible suspect. Police calling out parents. This was at 1130 at night, the evening right before Sunday, Easter. So if you don't know where your 12-year-old is, I think that should be a priority for you. In Nashville, an argument at Easter brunch leading one man to fatally shoot 33-year-old Alan Beecham and wound at least five others before fleeing the scene.
Police have identified Anton Rucker, a 46-year-old convicted felon, as a suspect in the shooting. They say he fled the scene in this Mercedes. We're going to do everything we can to get the suspect into custody and to bring him to justice. And in Chicago, at least 32 people shot over the holiday weekend, with four of those shot dying. After at least three major shootings in Indianapolis in March, authorities pleading for peace. Our conflict should not lead to somebody pulling out a gun and trying to resolve it. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump. The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe v. Wade legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Although Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court on June 24, 2022, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015. Overfell v. Hodges. The Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. For the second time ever in the U.S., a human being has contracted bird flu. Here's what we know. Health officials say the person had direct exposure to cows, and presumably those cows also had the virus. There has been a recent outbreak among dairy cows in particular, spreading to at least four states, with a fifth state reporting a possible case. Once upon a time, we'd see a headline like this, and people would kind of ignore it. It would go away eventually. But post-COVID, now we're all concerned, right? So this person who's contracted bird flu for the second time what do we know about their condition and how concerned should people be? Well, again, I think it's important to emphasize this is only the second case we've ever seen of H5N1 bird flu in the United States. The first was in Colorado in 2022. This person has a very mild case, just conjunctivitis, which is pink eye. And that's important to emphasize because it's not in the lungs. It's not pneumonia, which would make it easier to transmit from person to person. So we should not be that concerned. How concerned should the general person be? The average person does not need to be worried. Right. If you have been in contact with an infected bird or an infected cow, or you've had direct contact with somebody who has this, then you need to be concerned. So, but for the general public, there, there's really very low risk at this stage. Should we be worried about the meat supply right. or the milk supply? Well, in terms of the milk supply, they are disposing of milk from the infected cattle. They are being isolated. Remember isolation from COVID? They're yeah. doing the same thing with the cows so that they don't infect the rest of the herd. And then it takes about seven to 10 days for the cows to recover. So they wait, and then once they have recovered, they return to the rest of the flock. In terms of um, the meat supply, again, because the cows recover, they don't have to cull the cattle. They just need to wait until they recover. So Tony asked about the concern of the public. Um, should we even be thinking about a vaccine for something like this? Uh, we're quite a ways from having a vaccine. I think the key thing is that the Texas Department of Health, the CDC, really jumped on this. First cases of the cows being infected were on Tuesday. By Friday, they'd already picked up this person, sent testing to the regional lab. CDC confirmed by Saturday. You know, so this was very rapid action. Some trillion cicadas will appear in April for the first time in 200 plus years. Brace for the cicada apocalypse. <laughs> Ah, spring. The birds are back. The flowers are back. But for the first time in centuries, billions of cicadas are also about to be back. Yay. 17 and 13 doesn't overlap too often. 
As entomologist Dr. Frank Krell was alluding to there, in a few weeks, the brood of cicadas that emerges every 13 years and the brood that emerges every 17 years are going to pop out of the ground at the same time, which last happened in 1803. Reunited and it feels so good. Some are even calling this spring and summer the cicada apocalypse. What should we do when there are millions of them here all of a sudden? Oh, just enjoying them. Or going away if we don't enjoy them. They are not harmful. Well, they may not be that harmful. But cicadas are still quite the loud neighbor for the four to six weeks that they move into your backyard. Some cicadas can even reach over 100 decibels. Why are cicadas so loud? What are they talking about? Um, they are talking about girls. <laughs> Yes, according to Dr. Frank, we're just going to have billions of males audibly competing with each other <laughs> to grab the attention of the female cicadas. When they come out, they have to be quick. Before they get eaten, they have to find a mate and mate. Now, to be clear, it's mostly the 13-year cicadas impacting the South and Appalachia, while the 17-year cicadas hit the Midwest. Da bears. Da bears. But in states like Illinois, they might get both in the same forests. Sorry, guys. Also, it's about to get real wet because according to the National Academy of Sciences, <laughs> a new study finds that cicadas have the fastest urination velocity in the world at three meters per second. That is more than elephants and horses, guys. News you can use, Danny. Uh, You're welcome. Way to scare us to begin spring. Ew. <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> A surge of cicadas is expected here this spring, more than we've seen in over 200 years. Two groups of the insects called the Great Southern Brood and the Northern Illinois Brood emerge at the same time in late April. Scientists tell us 16 states in the Midwest and Southeast will be buzzing with about a trillion cicadas. Holy moly. It's a rare event that will last about six weeks. When the hordes of male cicadas start humming to find a mate, the noise can be even louder than a plane. Shut it down, ladies. Shut it down. <laughs> uh, this dual surge won't happen again for another 221 years. Spring brings flowers, you know that. It brings birds. And for the first time in centuries, billions of cicadas. Ugh. Scientists say in just a few weeks, the brood of cicadas that emerges every 13 years. Anything that emerges is bad news, right? Yeah. Nothing no. ever good comes when somebody emerges. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, 
is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.